You're listening to the Online Entrepreneur Experience with Jared Jenny and John Olson, aka Chew. If I tell you that necessity breeds invention, necessity breeds creativity, necessity breeds, in essence, a better work ethic, what do you think about that? What what comes to mind? Well, necessity, I mean, that's like you have to do it. Um, I mean, if you have to do something, you're going to go do it regardless of anything. So, I mean, that comes down to your work ethic too. Say you were down and out, you didn't have a dime to your name. You're going to do what it takes to actually get back to where you were. That's also called your paradigm. You know, hustle your ass off. Yeah. (laughs) You know what comes to mind for me? I have a specific example of you. Why don't you touch on that? I'm, I'm remembering something about a TV. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, yeah. So we're in a digital freedom movement. That's our platform. Obviously, you guys are watching this. Um, so I followed Kellen Chafee. He's the owner of the company for two years. And I was, you know, I was a construction worker. That's all I was. Uh, I was kind of high in the company, but hated my life. So it took it, when it came time to actually join DFM, I actually uh, didn't have any money because I was laid off. It was winter and I was down and out. I've, it was a necessity to move forward with my life instead of doing this stupid construction trap all the time, you know, wasting my life. So what I did is I looked around my house and I go, what don't I need? And I looked at my 70 inch TV and I sold that bad ride for uh, 300 some dollars. And the guy picked it up in like 15 minutes because it was like a $2,000 TV. I didn't need it. So I sold my TV pretty much for the course price and I bought into DFM and the rest is history. So that's, that's huge. Yeah. And that's, but that's when you realize, you know, what you can live without. And I think a lot of people, you know, we're very fortunate. I don't care what your political stance is or how you feel about the current state of our country. We live in the land of opportunity, right? But we get used to all these creature comforts and I think it holds people back because, you know, if, If you have a little bit of money and you're like, God, I'm short on money, I'm sick of bills, you don't really think about that stuff. But once you have to, it's like to take it into like a more natural analogy here. So let's say you're standing on the edge of a cliff and you can jump off into the ocean, right? And it's completely safe. Like, you know that there's enough water down there, you're not going to get hurt, but you don't want to do it. Well, if there's someone fucking chasing you with a gun or something, you think you're going to jump into that water? (laughs) Yeah, you're going to do it. So for me, this whole necessity breeds, um, you know, creativity, intelligence, you do what you got to do to get stuff done. Just like John said, so I'm a mechanic, I'm wearing one of my shirts right now. The beauty of it is it's my own brand. And I realized very early on, you know, I've always had a passion for cars and motorsports. And growing up, I always had this urge and this craving to know more about cars, you know, when I was in middle school, early high school, throughout high school, I knew a little bit, but I didn't understand how all of it worked. And that bothered me. I was like, I want to know more about this stuff. So went to a trade school, got my degree and started working in a shop. And the whole reason, you know, you get into, you have a passion. A lot of times it's because it's, it's the fun aspect of it or the creative aspect of it that gets you into it. And I quickly realized that to live a normal life, to have this house, to do all that stuff and work as a mechanic, I was never going to get to do the passion side of cars that I wanted to do. And I was like, you know what? I need some sort of passive income out of this. Like, I love my job. I like being active. I like learning. I like fixing cars, but this isn't going to cut it, you know? And I started analyzing the top earners in my field. And on average, if you're on the upper end of the scale as an automotive technician, you're making a hundred, maybe a little over a hundred thousand a year, which is good money. Don't get me wrong, but that's not the median, the median earn is about 50 grand a year. And it's like, by the time you have a house and you pay your insurance and you just exist, you don't have any money left over to do anything fun. And I was like, okay, I don't want to live my whole life through. I don't want to live my whole life in the field I want, but never able to do the things that I do. So that I want to do. So I was like, I need a passive income source here. I need it. One thing I need to get out of working for someone else. And I need a passive income source to monetize this, to be able to fuel that passion. So just like John said, 
I got into DFM. Here's my certificate right here. Learned all about affiliate marketing, online business, how to monetize yourself online. And I launched a YouTube channel all about cars. And, you know, DFM, like we have our own products and um, we have our own products and processes to do affiliate marketing. But I learned so much about affiliate marketing through there that I started landing brand deals, tool deals, all this stuff on my automotive YouTube channel, not even this channel here, but you just, you realize. And so then I went out on my own, I quit Toyota and I thank DFM every day for that because I don't know if I would have had the falls to do it without no way no. <laughs> and figuring out that there was another way, but here's what happened. So I started out on my own. I opened my own shop. I bought a lift. I got all the equipment. I got licensed. I got insurance. All this costs a lot of money. And if you're a small business owner, it takes a lot to get you off the ground. And the big corporations don't want you doing this, you know, so they make it extremely hard for you to get going. Well, what I quickly realized is I wasn't just the mechanic anymore. I was the general manager, the mechanic, the service writer, the parts runner, the bookkeeper, the secretary. And it got to a point where I didn't know if I could do it anymore. I was like, this is, you know, I'm, I remember searching around my house for change so that I could go get the parts for the customer's car I was working on so that I could get it done. But my point here is you get desperate enough, you're going to find a way to get shit done. If you're not desperate enough, you'll, you'll probably never do it. You're just going to think about it. You're not going to actually do anything. You'll think like, ah, oh, maybe my life sucks. Maybe this job sucks. But until your back is up against a wall, you're never gonna you're never gonna take a jump. There's just so much that you know goes into it. And I think people think that if you get into affiliate marketing and online business, the only thing that you're gonna do is sit in front of a computer and talk to people. But the beauty of it is you can mold that thing around whatever your passion is. You know, like one idea I have, and I haven't done it yet, but one idea that I have is I want to start an online course for martial arts. John knows this. You guys might know it. I have my own Taekwondo gym and then I manage my instructor's gym. And I was thinking, you know, that's the beauty of it. We're in the age of the internet and cell phones and you can monetize anything that you want. You just have to figure out what it is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just it. You know, that's where I'm going to go back to online business. You are not sitting in front of a computer all day, every day, no. unless you choose to. You can do absolutely anything you want during the day as long as you're getting stuff done. That comes down to prioritizing. So if you don't have a plan, don't think you're not, you're just going to free ball it and be successful. But like, like you, would you list off four sources of income right there? Yeah. Since you started DF, well, you know, you were obviously a mechanic before DFM, but like once you start learning the skills to do all this, you start <laughs> setting up multiple streams of income. And all of a sudden, and it's scary. It's very scary at first, but that's necessity. And that's, you know, like when you're desperate, you're going to do it. Otherwise, yeah. don't bitch about it. You and know, it, anybody who's super successful has multiple streams of income. You know, it's yeah. just, there's no way around it. I have a good buddy that owns a mechanic shop and a towing business. So there's two there. He has his mechanic shop and his towing business. He has a mechanic that works for him, right? So that's passive income for him. He also owns a salvage yard that he sells parts out of. There's a third stream of income. He also owns a set of storage units that he rents out on his property. That's a four. He just, it blew up, you know, and with online, you know, and the internet being such a commodity for everybody nowadays, it's, it's easier than ever to build different sources of income. Oh yeah. Actually, once you do one, yeah, that's all it takes. You know, you you need to take that first step. Yeah, like myself, I'm I'm also building my own course. Like right now, I actually put it aside so I could do this with you. Um, and this has been in the making for probably a year and a half because a year and a half ago I was so terrified to even put a piece of a pen to a piece of paper and start doing it because I didn't know where to start. Well, I made the, the decision to start doing that. And now I'm in the process of typing. It's completely done, except I need to type it out and shoot the videos for it. And then it's, and it's mint. 
Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. Even if it fails miserably, like I have no doubt in my mind it will not. But if it did, I'm okay with that because I did what I couldn't do a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's all experience. Yeah, nothing, so nothing's still... ever a waste. And I like what you said about you know one thing snowballing into another because like when I started my YouTube channel, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get money on ads. You know, that's how YouTube works. You get money from the ad revenue. And then I'm going to use Odelphi headlights as an example. This is an automotive tool. I didn't even reach out to them. They just stumbled across my channel and the CEO of the company emailed me and he's like, well, he commented, asked if he could email me. And so I commented back, gave him my email, got in contact with him. And he's like, can I send you a couple of these products to try out and make a video? And again, back to DFM. I went and talked to Kellen and Mark and I was like, I don't know how to structure this deal here. Like, I don't yeah. want to give him my time and my energy just for a light. You know, this is something. And I ended up structuring an affiliate deal. So I got paid to shoot the videos. I get paid to shoot videos. And every one of these bad boys that sells, I get a cut of it. It's like yeah. royalties, right? But oh, yeah. my, point, my point being, I didn't even, you know, think about that streaming income until I started my channel. And then it's just a snowball effect. It's going to keep building, but you got to start. And if you get desperate enough, you're going to find ways to do stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, being desperate is a good thing. Don't ever think it's bad or being scared of something. Cause I heard a saying, it said, you know, the, the riches you, you want, or, you know, you're pursuing, they're in the cave that you don't want to enter. Oh yeah. Because terrified to go in there you know so i mean that's huge there might be a bear in there but well and that's i'll close this out with one more statement and this is a real life example again but with my taekwondo gym you know martial arts is a very disciplined and military-esque form of you know art. it's it's very it's very rigid and focused and a lot of times it's really cool to see like young children build into that but I'll do belt tests with them all the time. You know, I got to promote them and test them and I'm hard on them. And I'll have little kids yeah. all the time. They stand up there and they're, you know, six, seven, eight years old and their lip is trembling and they're shaking. And I'm like, Hey, and I'll just make up a name. I'll be like, Hey, Eric, are you nervous right now? Yeah. And he'll go, you know, and he's shaking. I'm like, is that a bad thing? He'll go, I'll go, no, it's not. That's a great thing. He's like, why? And I said, cause one, you don't know how well you're going to perform under this pressure. And two, that means that you care about it, right? And he goes, well, yeah, I really want my belt. I said, that's yeah. why you're nervous because it's something you care about. I said, if you didn't give a shit about it, you'd be <laughs> up here and you'd be like, meh, whatever. And you'd never get it. But because you're nervous and you have that necessity of fear driving you, you're going to have a better belt test. And that's the message I wanted to bring today. Awesome, man. Yep. I'll, I'll let you end it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> that was a great story. Analogy. I love it. Yeah, so we'll be back in another week. Once again, I am Jarrett Jenny, SWR with Digital Freedom Movement. That's John Olson, a.k.a. Cheers. Thing. He's got one more thing. It, when we get to 25, what, what's the number? We're giving away $100 when we get to 2,500 25, yeah, 25 subscribers. Right. Yeah, we're giving away $100. So subscribe, like, comment, and get that 100 bucks. Yeah. We'll give away a gift card. I don't know exactly where it's going to be yet, but we're giving away a probably like an Amazon gift card. So you can get whatever you want, share the video, like the video, subscribe. It really helps us out and lets us bring more of this content to you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning into the online entrepreneur experience. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes that we're releasing and any of these amazing pieces of value that we're giving out. And if you could take the time out of your day and leave us a review, we'd be so grateful. We look forward to seeing you on that next episode.